couple goes to a secluded island cabin in the middle of a forest lake for their honeymoon. With dark secrets waiting to be unraveled, their marriage faces a risk of collapse. Julianne, a newlywed wife, smokes while leaning on an old truck disregarding her injuries. Then she recalls the events which led to her current state. Weeks ago, Julianne and Mitch stood before the altar for their wedding. At the reception, Mitch delivered a speech to thank his in-laws Kate and Charlie for their wedding party. He expressed his gratitude to his absent father, who advised him to marry someone he's known for a long time but pointed out that the old man would make an exception for Julianne. He also thanked his truck for breaking down which led to him riding the bus and meeting his wife. The party ended and Kate asked her daughter if she was sure about things, so Julianne declared she was. The mother reminded her to return for her birthday party in two weeks, and she promised to do so. The couple rode the old truck and the long, pleasant drive ended in a forest. Soon, the couple walked to their destination while the wife asked questions about the place. The husband said he and his father found it during a hunting trip. Julianne confirmed their access to electricity and water, but her man answered that there was none in the cabin besides phone reception. Mitch playfully teased her for loving his adventurous spirit. Then he mischievously negotiated to stay longer, but Julianne jovially refused. They paused on a makeshift dock where the wife finally saw their honeymoon spot, a small island cabin in the middle of a forest lake. Concerned, she inquired about its safety, but Mitch reassured her he'd protect her. She trusted her husband, and they rode the only wooden boat they could use to cross the waters. As they arrived, Mitch Mitch Princess carried his wife, and Julianne asked to be let go to call her mom. Unfortunately, there was no reception, and upon sensing her distress, the husband asked if she wanted to return and blamed the local guide for the false information. The wife dismissed returning, so the husband unlocked the cabin door. Julianne scanned the place, noticing some markings on the walls. Mitch explained that hunters carved the walls to mark the days they stayed or the animals they caught. Julianne read a carved statement from people named Senior and Junior that they'll return next year which she found fascinating. The wife stubbed her toe on a floor plank and acted cutely, so the husband attended to her, which led to a sweet and intimate afternoon. After the deed, Julianne proclaimed how much she loved Mitch, but she discovered that he was fast asleep like clockwork, which she found adorable. The following day, the wife woke up with her husband placing something in an old metal box. He wore the key like a necklace and sweetly asked what Julianne wanted. Their second day was spent making the cabin livable, so the wife cleaned up and placed decorations while the husband miserably failed to fix the roof. That evening, they cuddled beside a campfire, and Mitch initiated talking about a child they'll have, but Julianne immediately reminded him that they agreed not to rush. Mitch kept diverting the conversation to their future kids, so Julianne mentioned an alternate universe where she was still in school and with Anthony, her ex-boyfriend. The husband instantly got upset upon hearing the name, so the wife firmly shut down the conversation. Julianne woke up earlier the next day and took birth control pills before leaving. She she walked toward the lake, but the deeper she went, the more anxious she became. So she returned to bed and snuggled with her husband. Hours later, Mitch invited her to swim, but she refused. The husband carried her to the water and slowly placed her on an inflatable raft. He reassured his wife that things were perfect, and Julianne soon fell asleep, unaware of holes in her floater. Simultaneously, Mitch left her alone to grab some beer. The sleeping woman turned sideways and she fell into the water. The husband immediately saved her, but she cursed at him for leaving her. Mitch explained his side, so Julianne confessed she couldn't swim because she feared the water. The husband inquired why she allowed him to bring her to an island cabin, so the wife said she thought she'd overcome it if she were with him. She apologized and they made up, leading to another intimate evening. However, Julianne's fascination with Mitch's body clock decreased, and she openly expressed her disappointment. Then she began asking trivial questions regarding some changes in her appearance. Mitch assures her that he'll love her no matter what. The husband coaxed her sweet and she finally brightened up. The following day, the wife's curiosity about the safe increased, so she inquired about it. Mitch vaguely answered that it was simply for protection. When Julianne probed more, he ended the discussion by grimly commenting about the amount of makeup she brought. Julianne vented her frustration through painting. Her husband called her outside to present an easel he made as a peace offering which magically worked. Afterward, the couple returned to the forest, and Julianne attempted to convince her husband to have a short trip to town, adding that she needed to contact her mom. Mitch refused since it was an hour-long drive and diverted the talk to the animal trap he set up. 
demonstrating its effectiveness. While blabbering about his work, the wife walked away, and he realized too late that she was nowhere in sight. He soon found her picking flowers and dragged her back to the cabin. After 10 days, Julianne's anxiety about being stuck in the island cabin alone with Mitch intensified. She opened up about wanting to return to their real home to start up their real married life, but this offended her husband, as they hadn't even completed the two-week honeymoon. He insisted that this was how they'd live, but Julianne stood firm on her decision by declaring they had to go home. Their argument intensified as Mitch mocked her spoiled attitude and over-dependence on her mom. At the same time, Julianne blamed him for not checking the reception in the area before bringing them there. The wife concluded that this place changed her husband, but Mitch demanded to follow his commands. He went to the forest, leaving his wife alone. Frustrated, Julianne trashed the cabin, and hours later, the husband returned apologizing and whispering sweet nothings to her, which she ignored. The next day, Mitch interacted with his wife as usual, but she ignored him until she couldn't find her second case of birth control pills. She asked him if he'd seen it, but he denied it. Julianne stormed into the house and stubbed her foot on the same floor plank, just like the first day. Infuriated, she hammered it aggressively, and her husband inquired why it upset her so much since they were married. They argued again about having children, but Mitch exuded dominance over his wife. He commanded her to obey him because her plans were uninteresting and dependent on her mom. He proclaimed they weren't leaving before storming out of the cabin. He rowed the boat to get to the forest while Julianne rushed to the other side of the lake, staring into the distance. Mitch took his shotgun while Julianne walked as much as she could into the waters. Meanwhile, the husband shot something, and hours later, he returned home to cook the deer he had caught. He mockingly asked his wife how the water was, and without a word, she smoked his cigarette and headed out to stare into the distance again. She turned around, shocked after almost bumping into her husband. Mitch said, suggested intimacy, but she ignored him. The following day, the husband woke without his wife, so he rushed outside and saw her fishing. Calming down, he left her alone, unaware that Julianne was staring back into the forest. Entering the cabin, she caught Mitch looking at the contents of the safe. Shocked, he dropped the box and the contents scattered. The wife found her sketch on a napkin from the restaurant she frequented with her ex-boyfriend. She realized that her husband was her stalker, and the night they met at the bus stop was a planned meeting. Mitch made a petty excuse, so Julianne teased him about stalking her. The husband walked away with a safe, and the wife marked the wall for their 14th day. She followed him and demanded the keys as she was leaving despite Mitch's apologies. The husband became enraged since they couldn't even work out being married for two weeks. He kept nagging Julianne for being spoiled and dependent on her mother, but the wife defended herself by concluding that he was only insecure. To get even and provoke him more, Julianne told him not to use her nickname because Anthony used to call her that, and she became intimate with him multiple times without the man falling asleep afterward. Mitch was about to attack her, but she grabbed a bottle and smashed it on his head. She took her phone and rode the boat to the forest. Unfortunately, the truck was locked, so she ran away to call her mom. However, the reception was poor, and Kate couldn't understand her. The battery was drained, so she threw the phone in frustration. Soon, Mitch arrived in the forest and found the broken phone, while Julianne discovered a grave. Her husband finally spotted her, but she thanked him for saving her this time. So Mitch apologized and requested her not to leave again. While Julianne was sleeping that night, Mitch sank the boat, so her despair increased when she discovered this the next day. Fortunately, she spotted a floater from the sunken boat, so she used the fishing rod to take it while staying under Mitch's radar. The husband checked up on her and didn't see what she was after. She hid it under the bed, and Mitch arrived to take the car key from the safe. He visited the grave while Julianne Julianne waited on the island. When Mitch returned late that night, his wife turned intimate again, and he fell asleep afterward like clockwork. She cautiously stole the key and opened the safe, where she found her pill case and the property deed under her father-in-law's name. She remembered the carvings on the wall when they first arrived and realized that the place belonged to Mitch's father, rather than a rented one for hunters. Julianne took the car key and swam across the lake using the floater. She hurried to the truck but failed to make it run. Then she noticed light coming nearer and knew that it was Mitch. She loaded the shotgun she found just before her husband approached the car. With her rifle, she commanded Mitch to fix the truck, but Julianne's view of him was blocked when he opened the hood. He stealthily appeared on the side and punched the window, breaking it. Julianne woke up chained to a tree the following day while Mitch destroyed her floater. He concluded that she found the property deed and added that she already met his father at the grave in the forest. He narrated that it was a hunting accident, and his old 
old man told him he would only be a real man if he had a family. He informed her of his plans to remain in this property forever. He boasted how perfect it was compared to the property Charlie, Julianne's stepfather, bought for them. As the wife remained silent throughout his blabbering, he declared that he'd protect her from herself and angrily trashed the house more. He threw all her painting tools, enraged at how materialistic his wife is. However, Julianne remained silent while rocking herself to calm down. Afterwards, she cleaned herself, attended to her wounds, and put on makeup while her husband became more anxious. He marched to the house and was sweetly but sarcastically greeted by Julianne. She mockingly joked that she couldn't complain about the food since she could be beaten again. She tauntingly asked how he was doing, and he confessed that he didn't want to be this way but he was nothing without his wife. He promised he'd be better, but Julianne just responded that today was her mom's birthday, the day she was supposed to return. She pointed out that people would soon look for them and scornfully asked Mitch what he'd do when that happened. The husband dismissed the thought because her family had no idea where they were. Julianne realized he knew everything because he had planned this meticulously especially because she was scared of water. As her tears fell, she inquired if there was anything her husband said that wasn't a lie, and Mitch told her that he truly loved her, to which she responded with bittersweet laughter. Thunder roared, and rain poured while the deranged husband carved a knife from a tree branch. Julianne courageously followed and pleaded to let her go. She tried to convince him that he didn't truly love her. However, Mitch insisted that she vowed to stay with him forever at their wedding. He repeated his plan of raising children in this cabin to protect them from the world. Julianne turned her back and trudged into the house as she knew he was out of his mind. He approached her, but she firmly told him off to which he complied. After the storm, Julianne noticed the birds chirping, the matches, the cigarettes, and the safety box in the cabin. She headed out to scan the surroundings and entered the house lighting all the matches. Julianne called Mitch and explained she was trying to light the stove but burned all the matches. The husband scolded her and decided to go to town to buy some more. As soon as as he left, Julianne rushed to retrieve a net and an axe. She broke out of her chains and fetched her inflatable raft underwater. She hurriedly taped the holes as much as possible while Mitch's truck broke down. On the other hand, Julianne inflated the raft and swam across the lake. Simultaneously, the husband grabbed his necessities, including the rifle, before returning to the cabin. Meanwhile, Julianne deactivated the hunting trap and took it with her as she swam back to the house. She placed the trap near the logs and covered it with dirt. She rushed into the house and dressed up like before her husband left. Mitch arrived with his wife waiting patiently in the house. She commented on how fast he was, so he explained that he just used the lighter in the car, meaning they didn't need matches. Julianne volunteered to cook if he'll get the fire started, so he kept the car key and some bullets in the safe and told the wife that the truck was broken. The wife frantically confirmed this information and asked if there was another way out to survive if anything happened to one of them, but Mitch dismissed the idea and said there was no other route. Julianne prevented him from starting the fire due to the new variable, so she tried to find the trap to disable it. Meanwhile, Mitch noticed that the chair his wife was sitting on was wet. He charged at her and saw the raft she used. The husband slapped her, and Julianne limped into the house, but Mitch quickly caught her and threw her around. She grabbed the pan and hit him, but it had no effect. The deranged man pushed her out of the cabin, and she ran near the logs. Mitch pushed her again, and she fell in front of the trap. Realizing this, she crawled away, leading the husband into the spot. However, Mitch strangled her with the chains, and she luckily found his cigarette and burned him with it. He stepped back into the trap and he screamed in pain. Julianne hit him with a log and he dropped unconscious. The wife grabbed the safe key from him and rushed to the house to open the box. But Mitch woke up and pulled her chains, making her collapse. She broke the table and the safe dropped. She took the box and the rifle on the floor. She frantically opened the safe and loaded the gun just before Mitch towered before her. She pointed the rifle at him in no time, and the shot echoed in the forest. Mitch dropped with an injured arm, and Julianne reloaded the gun. Her husband prompted her to end his suffering. Instead, the courageous woman sat beside him while tears fell from her eyes. Moments later, she figured something out, so she released herself from the shackles and tied the chain around the trigger, placing the lock tightly, making any fiddling lead to the trigger getting pulled. She dropped the rifle while Mitch whimpered. She walked away and turned around to tell him that he should rectify himself since she couldn't. The deranged man threatened she wouldn't 
make it alone. But Julianne calmly bid goodbye. She soon arrived at the lake and overcame her fear by swimming across. She finally reached the dock, but her silence was soon disturbed by a loud shotgun blast. She stood and stared at the island cabin before walking away without regret. She found the truck and smoked while leaning on it. The memories end, and Julianne stands stronger than ever. She removes her wedding ring and walks down the road alone. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.